Hi guys, it's um, Colin Dunn from www.cgdown.com. Right off horror, feel free to pop over to my site, sort of check out my kind of books and so forth. I received a question the other day about how to um, save on disk space, reduce disk space when rendering in uh, After Effects. Um, it uses um, a lot of uh, disk space when rendering out as a default AVI. So if we go into the composition here, i uh, just show you my one. I've got a, a very small kind of sort of project running at the moment, just running a couple of scenes. So if you add it to the render queue as you normally would, and by default, it will render as an AVI. And you can tell that immediately, but if you look at the output module, it will show as lossless. Now lossless means that it's an uncompressed file. So if you render out using its default settings and it shows lossless there, then if you have a viewing duration of approximately a minute, that will probably equate to a file size of about maybe six or seven gigabytes. So if you want to reduce that, we do once you, once you render it, click on lossless and it will pop up um, a window. Okay, now you can see by default it uses AVI, which is Audio Video Interleaved. Now, AVI rendered out from After Effects, uh, that file is not really supposed to be used um, in final production, and it kind of sort of expects you to use it in further post-production work. And so what you can do is change the format. Now, there's lots of different kind of sort of formats you can try here. You know, you've got PNG, um, you've got MP4, you know, so forth. And the one that works best for me is QuickTime. I've tried it for the others, and the one which creates the strongest amount of compression is QuickTime, which uses file extension of .mov, which, uh, which seems to be the kind of sort of default for, for After Effects. So what I normally do is render it as a uh, QuickTime, and then we you've got the format options here. I normally select, as it's displayed here, uh, 264. But if you go into the format options, you can choose your video codecs here. I don't normally worry about, uh, I don't change the advanced settings, uh, frame recording or anything like that. So basically that is it. Make sure it's set to QuickTime, change the format settings, make sure the codec I set is a 264. Now, if you don't have QuickTime installed, you'll obviously need to install that. Uh, otherwise it won't be obviously available for you to select in the format options. It is available for Windows. Now, sometimes there's a problem that when you try to open up QuickTime, in Windows, it will say that you need to install application support. Um, I do have a separate video for that. So if you want to try this and you install Window, uh, install QuickTime for Windows and you have problems opening it with that mirror message saying it needs application support, um, then check out one of my other videos which will be popping up at the end that will show you how to resolve that. Now, if you install QuickTime, okay, whilst you have After Effects up, you will need to restart After Effects in order for it to pick up QuickTime for Windows. So that's essentially do. If you've got any output, you have to enable it here. It does not by default uh, um, render the out, uh, render the audio. So that's it. Quick time, change the Kodak here. Click on the OK, and then as soon as you've uh, done that, you will see that the output module uh, changes to custom Quick Time, um, and that's it. That's what you do. And then you render out your project, and you should find that your rendered out project will be considerably less in size. What would have normally have been about sort of five or six gigabytes will probably be now less than half um, a gigabyte. Thank you very much for watching. Got any questions, please ask. Thank you, bye-bye.